In this video, we're going to take this and turn it into this using just After Effects and Photoshop. I think these animations really help your photos to stand out, especially on Instagram, because they are really pushing reels at the moment. If you're new to this channel, why not think about hitting that subscribe button for more tips and tricks? And with that, let's jump into it. So here's a little photo manipulation I've been working on and I feel it's now ready for some animation. The advantage here for me is that every element in this particular Photoshop file is a layer. So it's pretty much primed and ready to be animated already. Well, hold up. I just want to animate a JPEG file, yeah? No worries, if you're working with a single layer JPEG photo like this one, you're going to need to cut the subject out from the background and tidy a few bits up. So before we jump over to After Effects, let's first show you how to prepare your JPEG file for animation. Now there's a few ways you can cut out the subject in Photoshop, like using the pen tool for example, but the quick and dirty way to do this in no time at all is using the select subject option and getting the software to do it for you. Unlock the layer by clicking here, make sure the layer is highlighted and head over to select and click subject. And immediately Photoshop has done a pretty good job at drawing around the subject like so. Hit Ctrl or Apple X and it will be cut out from the background. Then after that, create a new layer by hitting the little plus icon here and hold Shift Ctrl V to copy the subject to the new layer like so. Now we have placed the subject and background on separate layers, we just now need to fill in the gap we made when we cut the subject out. While holding Ctrl, click in the box area of the subject layer and this will reselect the subject. Head over to Select again, then Modify and click on Expand. Expand it by around 30 pixels and click OK. Now let's just hide the top layer for the time being and highlight the background layer. Next up, head over to Edit, then Content Aware Fill and a new window will appear. Click OK and as you can see, Photoshop has tried its best to fill in the information here. It's not perfect, but we can tidy it up a bit. Deselect the selection and make sure the new layer we've created to fill in the hole is highlighted. In this case, it's called layer zero here. We are now going to use the clone stamp tool to merge the area in a little bit better. Making sure you're using a soft brush, hold down Alt or the Apple key on the keyboard, select an area you want to clone, and after doing that, you can paint over the area like so. The aim here is just to clean up the parts that the content aware fill did for us earlier. Vary up the size of your brush accordingly to get the areas you need. Again, every time, hold Alt or the Apple key to select an area you want to clone. As you can see, I'm cloning the areas from either side to make it match more with the background and blend in. You get the idea, so I'm just going to speed up this part because this is getting pretty boring. And there you go. Once you're happy, hold Shift and highlight the background layer and the above layer, right click and merge those layers together. Still with me? Okay, all we need to do now is save the Photoshop file and we are ready to jump over to After Effects. Okay, so with a new project ready in After Effects, we are ready to roll. First up, import your Photoshop file and make sure Import Kind is set to Composition Retain Layer Styles and Layer Options is selected to Editable Layer Styles. Click OK, then head down to this tab here to create a new composition. Let's call this Float IG Reel. So before we start animating, we need to decide what aspect ratio we need the video to be. For Instagram Reels, we need it to be at a 9 by 16 ratio. The first number is always the width and the second number is always the height and this is often called portrait mode. In this case, we need to set our resolution to 1080 by 1920. Don't be tempted to set your resolution higher to 4K as Instagram will make a poor job at converting the file and it will look pixelated. I'm going to have my frames per second to 30 in this example, but 24 frames will make your animation more film-like if you want to go for that style. Length of reels range from 15 to 30 seconds and stories are a maximum of 15 seconds. So I'm going to keep this video to 8 seconds because this is just going to be a short animation. Next up we're going to drag our Photoshop comp into the new composition we just created and scale it down to fit. To do this, hit S on the keyboard and adjust accordingly. Once you're happy with that, jump back over to the original Photoshop composition and let's get animated. As you can see, After Effects has opened up the Photoshop file with all our layers ready to go. To get the ball rolling, we need to make each layer 3D by clicking each individual selection box here. Then right click under the layers, highlight new and select camera. We don't need to change any settings here, so let's continue by clicking OK. With the new camera set up, head over to the little layout drop down menu and select two views and make sure the default is set to top. Think of this above shot like it's a top view of a stage. By moving the layers forward or backwards will depend on how close they are to the camera. 
So now we can see the above shot of where each individual layer and camera view is in the composition, we need to separate them to give the composition more depth. Start by highlighting the background layer, click P on the keyboard and place this layer all the way back into the distance like that. So it's right at the back of the stage. Next I'm going to do the same with the following layer which is me, click P on the keyboard and I'm going to bring this forward in the space just a little bit. And finally I'm going to click P on the keyboard again and bring the camera even closer to the front of the stage like so. Once I'm happy where the layers are placed in a 3D space, we're going to need to scale up the images by clicking S on the keyboard and adjust the size of each layer so they look similar to how they were before. Now you can see from the top down shot that each layer now occupies a different area of the stage, depending where it is in relation to the depth of the photo, if that makes sense. Now when we highlight the camera layer, click P for position on the keyboard and move the camera back and forth in the space like so. You can see how it reacts to the layers now they're positioned correctly in a 3D space of the stage. Pretty cool huh? Now bring the playhead to the beginning of the timeline. Click the stopwatch to create your first keyframe like so. Then head over to around 8 seconds with the playhead again and click this little diamond here to create another keyframe like so. I want the image to be zoomed in first and then slowly pan out to reveal the whole photo. So head back over to the first keyframe with the playhead and change the position accordingly like so. And this will animate the camera layer to do a virtual camera slide using those keyframes we just made. Next, let's make me look like I'm floating slowly upwards by highlighting layer 3 here. Bring the playhead to the beginning of the timeline, making sure we've hit P on the keyboard and clicking the stopwatch icon here to create a new keyframe. Head over again to around 8 seconds in with the playhead and click the diamond icon to create another keyframe like so. Now with the 8 second keyframe, we're going to move layer 3 up slightly so it looks like I'm floating. So now when we play it back, it will animate like this. Cool. Now for the camera layer, I want to rotate it just a little bit. So to do this, we're going to hit R on the keyboard, select a keyframe at the beginning and end by clicking the stopwatch and the diamond again like so. And I'm going to adjust the Z rotation very slightly to give it that free fall effect. Now that's looking pretty cool for a quick 5 minute composition and we could leave it there and export it out or we can add a little bit more flair using a smoke overlay and the puppet warp tool. Let's do it. To keep things tidy let's hit U on the keyboard to close all the frames on each layer. Head on over to the project tab here and import a cloud overlay. I downloaded this one from Envato Elements. In fact, most of these elements in this photo manipulation are from Envato Elements too. Envato Elements is very handy if you want access to stock photos, videos, and 3D assets. So be sure to check the link below. Once you have the overlay imported, drag and drop it into the timeline. And like the other layers in the comp, we need to position it in the 3D space. Before we do that, let's just right click on the layer, highlight blending modes, and select screen to get rid of the black background and the clouds there. Hit P for position and place it where you want in the comp. Then click the 3D icon and move it to where you want on the stage. I think I'm going to place it in front of all the other layers for this one. Next, I'm going to turn down the opacity slightly so it's not too intense. And finally, I want to add color to the cloud overlay by heading over to the effects tab on the left here and dragging and dropping a hue saturation effect to it. Click the little colorize box here and I'm just going to adjust the hue so it has a little bit of a yellowish tint to it. And there you go, atmosphere sorted. Finally, let's add some movement to me using the puppet tool. Making sure I have the right layer selected, click on the little pin icon up here and what we're going to do is add a pin to the joints we want to move slightly. Once you've done that, hit U on your keyboard to reveal the keyframes of the puppet tool. Go to the beginning of your timeline, click and drag across all the little diamond icons here to create a new keyframe for all the positions. Head back over to the end, make sure none of the keyframes are highlighted blue, click anywhere in the timeline to unselect if so. And with the pin tool still selected, move each pin to make it look like the subject is moving. The key to making this look good is subtlety. Don't move the pins too much or it will look odd. I think less is more with this tool, especially if you're moving joints. And there you go. Now let's head back over to the float IG reel composition we made earlier. 
Watch it back just to make sure it's looking good. I'm happy with that. Now let's export that video out for Instagram Reels. Click File, Export, and select Add to Adobe Media Encoder. I like to use the Media Encoder because it gives you more options when rendering out. Click on the output file and select where you want to save it. Then click on the preset link. Make sure you click on Match Source so it's the right aspect ratio for the Instagram Reels. As you can see, the output is 1080 by 1920, which is all good. Click OK and render that bad boy out. And that is it team, transfer it over to your phone, upload it to Instagram, whack a trending song to it and you are done. I really hope this video helps, if you've got any questions be sure to give me a shout in the comments below and with that thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.